Hello there guys and welcome to another one of my reviews. The gods of the automotive industry have smiled upon me and today we're driving a very special car. I'm talking about the T-Roc Air, of course. This is a very special car, not in the way you might be thinking right now, but more in, along the lines of the fact that nobody saw this car coming. Now, when Volkswagen launched the T-Roc initially back in 2017, they said it's going to be a B-segment crossover for people driving around town, but everyone wanting crossovers these days, it was a car meant to replace the Polo and the Golf into one single package that was lifted. And um, as a result, the sales have been quite astounding for the T-Roc. Many people predicting that the T-Roc will replace the Golf in the future. That didn't really happen just so far. Uh, the Golf still is a bit cheaper depending on the market you're in, but this was a car meant to be um, easy to run, easy to maintain, and um, so on. So the R version didn't even cross anyone's mind, and yet here we are. In 2019, the car was launched, and in 2022, received a facelift along with the entire um, T Rock range. So what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about a car with the same drivetrain as the Golf 7R. Under the hood, we have a two liter four cylinder engine, petrol engine, turbocharged to 300 horsepower and 400 Newton meters of torque, hooked up to an all wheel drive system um, via a seven speed dual clutch gearbox, DSG gearbox. And this car can do 100 kilometers an hour in 4.9 seconds and uh, it will go up to a top speed of 250 kilometers an hour. To put things into perspective, these are the same results you would get, similar results you would get with a E92 M3. Yes, my bet is that this car will be faster than the E92 M3 with its V8 engine under the hood in most situations. You wanna know why? Because it has all wheel drive. So even though the spec book says 4.9 seconds for the T-Roc R or, and 4.7 uh, seconds for the E92 M3, most of the time, because of that rear wheel drive setup of the BMW, this car will prove to be faster. I mean, that 4.7 second dash to 100 kilometers an hour that BMW claims for its M3 will be achieved in ideal conditions. Otherwise, this car might prove to be faster even though it has over 100 horsepower less. So that's the advantage all wheel drive brings. But let's get back to the car in question. What about the design? How can you tell this is an R model? Well, the T-Roc does come with the R line package. So you could fit some R line add-ons on your one liter T-Roc, but the real deal has a huge different bumper up front with real vents over here in order to help out with the cooling of the engine under the hood. It has bigger wheels. It has a lowered suspension and a stiffer suspension, of course. It's 20 millimeters lower than a normal uh, T-Roc. It comes with 18 uh, inch wheels as standard. We have 19 inch wheels over here. They look great. And behind them, you will notice the huge brake uh, calipers with the R logo on them. Of course, you get R logos everywhere. You get one in the front grille. You get one on the front fender. Um, you get one on the tailgate uh, and one on each wheel and one on each brake caliper. So plenty of um, R badges all around. Speaking of the rear end, back there you will notice the air badge on the tailgate you will notice the design of the tail lamps looking really good and of course the quad tailpipes another thing you might notice is this fake carbon fiber detail on the c-pillar and the fact that you lose about 60 liters of storage space in the boot compared to a normal t-roc uh, with under 150 horsepower because in case of the t-roc if you get one with less than 150 horsepower, the rear axle will have a torsion beam suspension. If you get one with over 150 horsepower, you have a multi-link setup in the back. So if you do, you lose some storage space for comfort. So that's a choice you might have to deal with. This car also, have the black, also has the black package, which replaces all the chrome bits with black trims, and it looks absolutely stunning in this topaz blue color. 
Inside the cabin, what you will notice are the differences compared to a Volkswagen T-Roc. So the interior looks just like any other Volkswagen today. Um, not, a lot has, not a lot has changed, so we have a good mix of materials, soft touch plastic on the top side of the interior and scratchy plastics on the lower sides of the interior, including on the door cards and on the dashboard. We also have a lot of um, glossy blast, black plastic or plastic as I call it. Um, so not a lot has changed. We still have these touch sensitive controls over here, which are not exactly my cup of tea. Uh, we have touch sensitive buttons on the steering wheel as well. Not exactly my cup of tea, but that's where Volkswagen is heading these days. Maybe we, if we all write angry letters to Volkswagen and explain that we don't want How touch sensitive. Help? Yeah, we, we also have a voice activated assistant. Maybe if we all write a, an angry letter to Volkswagen and ask for um, an interior without touch sensitive buttons, maybe they will do something about it. Volkswagen and Mercedes, they seem to be like the, uh, at the forefront of this trend, which I personally don't like. But leaving that aside, let's focus on what is changed on an R model. So what you will get are these seats. They come as standard. They look and feel great to the touch. They also um, are comfortable and offer a lot of side support and side bolstering whenever you're driving in a faster or sportier uh, way. Uh, and yes, they do come as standard, as I already said. You also get this steering wheel, which is absolutely brilliant in my book. Perfect size, flat at the bottom to give it a more sporty feeling. And um, unfortunately, as I already mentioned, we have touch sensitive surfaces on it instead of uh, old school buttons. But you do get a very special button on it. It's the R button, which takes you straight into the race driving mode, which coincidentally is the one in which the car actually starts when you turn it on. Um, other than race mode, you also have eco mode, comfort mode and normal mode on this car, as well as individual mode where you can adjust a number of settings uh, on your car. And I guess you get all these five modes because we have the adaptive dampers installed on this car. It's a 1700 euro optional feature but i think it's worth the extra because all the other mqb platform cars i tested so far had an issue in the suspension department and that issue is that um, they are usually quite noisy i wouldn't say uncomfortable but they are noisy a lot of noise is coming in through um, the car's body towards the interior and the occupants um, and that's disappointing in my book we have independent suspension on this car front and rear and that also helps out when it comes to making it very comfortable and even though the suspension has been stiffened up and lowered compared to a normal t-rock um, it soaks up the bumps rather well uh, it's quiet as i already said and i would definitely not call it stiff or um, or lacking in comfort in any way even though as i said it is on the harsher side of things it soaks up the bumps pretty darn well all of this is quite boring might i say um because you don't buy a t-rock r to talk about how comfortable the suspension is you buy it to drive it hard and um, the car doesn't really disappoint so as you probably already know it uses the same ea 888 2 liter four cylinder petrol engine under the hood as its R brothers like the Golf or the um, Arteon or the Tiguan and so on. It's basically the same engine. Uh, it, in this application, though, it develops 300 horsepower, not 320 as it is on the Golf. Um, it has 400 Newton meters of torque and it's hooked up to a uh, dual clutch gearbox, DSG gearbox, with seven speeds. Furthermore, you get four motion as standard included. So that's the all wheel drive system, which is a Haldex type system. Basically, it will send power to the front axle first and to the rear axle only in case it needs to uh, via a multi clutch system. Um, and it can send up to 50% of the power to the rear axle. The thing is, it's very well configured and 
I drove this car quite a lot and in a sportier fashion than usual and I didn't see any sort of understeer at all. It feels quite neutral in most situations. Furthermore, I was surprised by just how much grip it had in rainy conditions, in the wet. It was quite brilliant and that says a lot about the way the four motion system was set up. Furthermore, since the car isn't all that heavy to begin with, it has 300 horsepower and all-wheel drive, it will do 0 to 100 km an hour from standstill in just 4.9 seconds, which is pretty darn fast. To put things into perspective, the E92 M3, as I already mentioned, has a 0 to 100 km an hour sprint that takes uh, 4.7 seconds officially, but in order to do that, since that's a rear-wheel drive car, you will need like a, an ideal launching surface. So I think this car will beat it in a straight line uh, uh, drag race, if you will. But that's not all. As I said, the car handles beautifully. It keeps its weight in check rather well. Uh, the brakes are also a highlight because they do their job perfectly. I had to lean into them a couple of times and they didn't fade at all and you can have a lot of fun with this car just enter an apex turn slightly a bit more than you would and you will feel the rear end pushing forward and giving you a oversteer feeling overall it's a quite it's quite a nice feeling um if you ask me so the one thing i would complain about even the steering feels quite nicely weighted the one thing i would complain about is the fact that we don't have that intense sound we should have from this engine. I know it's just a four-cylinder, but I've I've heard some pretty nicely sounding four-cylinder two-liter engines. Um, this one, this car actually looks really mean, drives really well, but doesn't have that sound that makes it stand out. Um, that's because of the OPF filter, of course. Um, and Volkswagen does offer a, a Krapovic exhaust for the car which probably sounds a lot better, um, but in standard guys, you don't really hear the engine that much. Of course, when you enter race mode, you will hear um, more noise inside the cabin, should I say. Um, that's because the car has uh, an audio system that pumps fake engines out into the cabin, but it's not bad. It's not like the one I've heard on the Cupra Formentor VZ. Um, which also had a similar system, a sound augmentation system. Um, but in that case, when you entered Cupra mode, the car, the sound pumped into the cabin was similar to a V8. In this case, it's a lot more natural feeling. And it's okay, you also get to hear a lot more of the induction noise. And that also gets your blood flowing, but you don't hear any pops and bangs. And that's, that's really a shame. But maybe if you buy one, you can do something about it. I don't know. You tell me in the comments what could be done in this regard. Um, so what would be the natural rivals of this car? Well, I can only think of one right now, and that would be the uh, Hyundai Kona N, which I've heard is a pretty great car too. I didn't get the chance to drive it as, uh, so far, but I think that's like the only rival this car has. If you know more of them, please let me know in the comment section below. I may be drawing a blank right now. Um, but other than that, I think most of the rivals this car will have, will have to face come from the Volkswagen group as well. <laughs> um, so I think the, some people would be weighing between this car and the Golf 8R. The Golf 8R is about six to 7,000 euros more expensive depending on the market you're in. Um, is it worth it? Well, the Golf 8 is a bit bigger inside. You get a bit more room. Uh, and does come with that trick rear differential that can split the torque between each wheel up to 100% on each wheel. Uh, up to 100% of the torque that comes from the engine because the rear axle doesn't get 100% of all of the torque. So um, that trick differential probably does a, lot, uh, a huge difference in the way the car drives. Furthermore, the Golf 8R can get, I mean gets as standard, a more powerful engine. So this two liter engine, delivers 320 horsepower on that uh, on the Golf instead of 300 on this model. So that's something you might want to keep in mind. So even though the Golf is more expensive, you do get more stuff on it. At the same time, 
this car has the ground clearance advantage. So it has a 14 centimeter ground clearance, as I said, two centimeters lower than a normal T-Roc. But for some people, it will matter. I don't know why, because nobody's gonna take this car off-roading ever. Uh, and for driving around town, the Golf would be high enough, I guess. Uh, but some people would prefer a higher driving position, I guess. Mm, that doesn't really come in handy when we're talking about driving in a sportier fashion. You feel a lot better when you're sitting lower. I would like to know your opinion on this matter. I would like to know if you would go for the Golf or the T-Roc. And um, of course, as usual, I would like to know if you enjoyed my review. Until next time, don't forget to like, share and of course, subscribe to keep this channel alive. Ciao.